the Dauphiné area of the Western Alps. Dramatic peaks that have inspired structural geologists captivated by folds like these to understand the tectonics of mountain building. But tectonics demands more than structural geology. Stratigraphy is just as important. And as stratigraphic understanding changes, so too must the tectonic models. In the 1970s, the understanding of alpine geology was thought of as largely solved. But quietly, areas were being mapped along with stratigraphic studies. And this work changed understanding of the Dauphiné Mountains, and with it, models of mountain building, not just for the Alps, but globally. What happened? Jean-Claude Buffetti had been mapping the ground east of Grenoble for many years, finding curious stratigraphic relationships at faults. Sure, there was no missing the kilometre scale faults, but when unravelled, these revealed normal faults across which stratigraphy changed. A leap of insight came when Marcel Lemoyne recognised the normal faults form an array, so-called bloc basculé, or tilted fault blocks. And with Buffetti and Maurice Gidon, he compared the alpine geology from before mountain building with the then new results from the Atlantic, just as fault blocks in the rifted European margin were being mapped out. And so the Dauphiné Alps were seen to include normal faults that bounded Jurassic aged half graben, now crumpled by much younger mountain building. One structure became talismanic, the Ornon Fault. Before visiting it, let's look at the stratigraphic elements. The Triassic rocks show rather little variation across the region. They're nicely exposed at the village of Laffrey, unconformable on crystalline basement. Here, the yellow weathered rocks at the foot of the cliff. The Triassic consists of a thin quartz aronite layer, but are chiefly dollar stones and collectively are only about 20 metres thick. So let's see what lies on top and follow a generation of geologists to classic outcrops that lie next to this meadow, site of Napoleon's confrontation with royalist troops and his return to imperial power in early 1815. His statue overlooks the outcrop and the rocks tell an older story. So these strata are typical of the Jurassic that sits on top of the football block to normal faults here. We can see that they're shallow water carbonates, they're grain stones, pack stones, and they've got eroded fragments of Triassic dollar stones. And they're not very thick. So this is a stratigraphy for what lies on top of fault blocks, these shallow water carbonates. But these fault block successions are rare. Generally across the Dauphiné, the Jurassic is much thicker and a very different aspect. It looks like this, slaty rocks in road section. And they form whole hillsides. Slaty rocks and limestones. So the outcrop up there, that cliff section, is representative of the Jurassic strata within the Ornon Basin itself. They're deep water marls and limestones and they build up thicknesses of, well, several kilometres. Lemoyne, Gidon and Barfetti realised the tectonic significance of these successions. A Triassic and lowermost Jurassic pre-rift, the Sinrift 
and then a blanket of post rift cover. Jurassic rift mega sequences preserved in a much younger mountain belt. So the Dauphiné Alps were once a set of tilted fault blocks sealed by latest Jurassic limestones. Seen here on top of this hill, the limestones forming that rimming cliff section. It's the stratigraphy that gives the game away. So let's go and visit the best example of rift basin architecture, the Ornon Fault and its half graben. This may be in the Alps, but this landscape is largely a Jurassic morphology, elevated and exhumed from out of the ocean. The cliffs on the right, that's to the west, are essentially the exhumed escarpment of the Ornon Fault, exposing the basement rocks in its footwall. The half graben fill is largely eroded out, the grassy valley floor. But most remarkably, you can still access the fault. Something in a modern rift basin, you'd only sample in a borehole or image seismically. Right, so let's get up to the fort plain. So this is the Ornon Fort, basement and Jurassic. I've got my hard hat on, let's go down and have a look. fault surface is mineralized by these shear fibers and these betray the dip slip final movements on the fault. And the fault is decorated with cataclasites, micro breaches cemented by black gouge in part derived from sheared Jurassic Marley sediment entrained along the fault plain. These fault rocks are Jurassic in age. But what of the Jurassic strata themselves in the hanging wall? Take that dark block on the other side of the gully. It's 50 metres across, a lump of pre-rift basalt that fell down the fault scarp. Also, this metres wide raft of Jurassic nodular limestone. And unlike those boulders in the gully bottom that have fallen down the modern cliff, the basalt and limestones are encased in Jurassic strata. This was a key stratigraphic observation made by Buffetti and colleagues. The Ornon Fault was active during the Jurassic. So a really great fault plain. Let's move further north along the Ornon Basin and look at a profile that exposes the hanging wall side of the fault. Right, let's get out of here. So we're off a little way along the Ornon Basin to a high alpine village, Villa Raymond, 
which provides a famous vantage point across the area. So this is a pretty good place to sit down and make a sketch across the Ornon Basin above the town of Bourdoisin, which is right down there in the valley bottom. But before that, we can see a great deal of stuff in the distance. The far peak is La Meige. That lot over there is the main part of the Ecran basement massif. And as we come across the great incised valley of the Romanche Valley, and then right across further still, we can see those peaks on the skyline, which are the Egi Darv. Fantastic viewpoint. But I'm more interested in the relationship of the basement that lies lower in the valley and the Jurassic that lies on top. So I'm just going to sketch that in and then show you what I've done. The high ground opposite is part of the Alpe d'Huez ski area. And this bit is our concern. So I'll generally start sketching a topographic skeleton onto which we can build the geology. A key landscape marker here is this road running across the hillside. It more or less follows the top of the basement, which I can colour in. But let's look a bit more carefully. We can see here a thin rim of Triassic pre-rift strata, offset by a small fault. like this in my sketch. And the pre-rift strata could be traced out along the top of the basement, offset by other faults. So now the Jurassic, which banks across the faults and onlaps, unconformably the pre-rift. But higher on the cliff, the Jurassic rocks are folded, hinges carved out, identifying recumbent folds. These are alpine structures superimposed on the old basin fill. We can summarise the basin structure, filtering out the later folds, revealing the synrift unconformable on the pre-rift, a half graben fill. So, the unconformity tipped down towards the Ornon Fault, Jurassic Basin fill, hints of onlap of it thinning out as you go to the east, little Ornon Faults that offset the top of the basement. Classic vision of what a half graben looks like. But what about the Alpine deformation? Buffett and Gidon related this to the prior presence of the half graben and the Ornon fault. Folding of the basin fill against the basement step. And this is what we see in outcrop. Lots of deep water Jurassic sediment. They're folded up against the Ornon Fault. This is the type area for buttressing. Let's just um, annotate up a photograph of those folds. So that's a pretty big hillside. The Ornon Fault lies off to the left and the Jurassic is deformed by upright folds, buttressed against the fault block. But what about further away from the fault? Well, we saw recumbent folding in the Jurassic strata. So Maurice Gidon put this together in his synthetic history, Jurassic normal faulting. Then much later, alpine buttressing evolving into overshear as the alpine deformation continued. 
is an explanation broadly retained, but with additional detail, by Thierry Dumont and the co-workers. So the presence of pre-existing basin structures has strongly influenced the progress of alpine tectonics. If we are to understand orogenic processes, we must first unravel and understand the pre-existing basin structures. That's a tectonic lesson from all on. It's a geosite that also provides a glimpse of the structure and stratigraphy of half graben that can inform understanding and appreciation of rift basin geology.